then how to embed it? <laughs> okay, cancel. Yes, I did. Sunny, I have stomach ache, so I go put one. Is there a point? How much do you know about this thing? Uh, <laughs> I never take virus in sec 2. It traces, you take a part of someone's organ to trace something. Uh, which is cancer lah. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> is that going to be blood? Is that going to be blood? I'm scared. <laughs> no, I saw something in a ambiguous red plastic. Looks like dried longan. Everything will be alright. <laughs> I'll be scared. So what histopathology does is that we study diseases by looking at the tissue in our body. Now disease can take many forms. Like cancer is one form of disease and many, many other disorders. So our work is very much diagnostic. We look for clues to then make the diagnosis after that. Right. By the way, should I call you Dr. Liao for today or Wei Chiang? What do you prefer? Uh, I'm okay with Wei Chiang actually. Wei Chiang? Yeah. Okay, Ken. Right, yeah. Same one, you met Wen Qi, right? Hello, yeah. I haven't met you. This is our grandfather. So when it comes through here, right, what is the size you're getting? Are you getting the whole lung or the whole eyeball or what? We've had big specimens in which you can get an entire leg even. Huh? So what we're going to do now is we're going to gown up. The treatment room is considered a dirty area. La. I'm not a very clean person. What you're seeing here is the initial snapshot, what we call gross description. So what you see here is a segment of the colon. So if I slice it through, can you see that there's a disruption in the layer? So this is actually the cancer, eating into the muscle, into the fat below it. We need to firstly sample this area put it into a cassette so that we can look at it under the microscope. You all must have very stable hands, is it? Hello! This is Dr. Long. He's also training to be a pathologist. What do you exactly do in your job? What is the usual turnaround? Do you all have urgent cases? Are you like doing this every day? So have you ever been scolded? I've always heard that like doctors have very bad work-life balance. Like, you know, OT, you're very stressed. After work, you're very stressed. Time to get your hands dirty. I'm scared. <laughs> you think there's something you can do? I can try. Noise. Oh. Good. Well done. <laughs> but that's really just the first step. What? Okay. All yours, Simon. Okay. This is our grandfather. Oh, the chair is so high. <laughs> no, I don't know why the chair is so high. I was told to make friends. Can you all talk while doing these things? How long have you been working? How old are you? Do you have experience? You're interning now. How do you study? But is it a little bit monotonous to do this every day? You don't like to work with people. You prefer not to work with specimens. Hello. Hi. I was playing with your station. After the tissue has been processed, we got to embed it into a block of wax. We're going to pour wax inside here, put the tissue into the mold, then you use a stamper to just press it down. Then, how to embed it? <laughs> Everything will be alright. <laughs> okay, safe, safe, safe. Okay, continue. Okay, I try. This is a new one. Pour the wax first. Very hot, eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then pull it to the cold side. Then you stamp it down. How oh, I know which side to stamp? Ah. Place the cassette on top, then fill up with wax. Then you can carry over to the cold plate. Yeah. Mm, nice? Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Okay. Um, what is the relationship like? between technicians and pathologists. You want to start or I start? You start first. <laughs> <laughs> it's a partnership. Lah. The pathologist-technologist partnership is akin 
to the doctor nurse partnership that you see in the world. It's kind of like a major and a minor, is it? For the pathologist, our work is very much focused on making the diagnosis portion, examining the tissues that you have to make that diagnosis. And this requires specialized personnel like Sang Wan. Actually, we are complementing each other. We need to help them to achieve better quality of sample. And then what do you all find most challenging or frustrating sometimes about your jobs? When you do a scope, you only take a small piece. And that may be all that is. Because if you lose that piece, you cannot tell the patient, oh, can you go and get another scope done? Because that's another risk for another procedure. Last time, the process versus now, right? What's the difference? Oh, a lot. Eh? For instance, like when you do embedding, we use electrical heated forceps. Years ago, what we do is use Bunsen burner to heat that forceps, nickel flame. Then behind you are alcohol. We never thought of it. It's very, very dangerous actually. We are very aware that the lab environment is a dangerous environment and we've devised many ways and systems to ensure that the people who are working in the lab are well protected. In more recent times, has pathology helped COVID-19 in any way? So actually our molecular pathology colleagues who are also pathologists have been working overtime. They've been working so hard ever since COVID started to try and ensure that this COVID-19 testing are done in a timely fashion. Interesting. Do you have any more No. This machine is called microtome. We use microtome to cut thin section from a piece of tissue in the block. The wax block, right? Yes, that we that's made right. The, yeah. the wax won't melt. Ah. It's got to be cold. That's why the air container is so cold, is it? Is it so cold? What? So you cut one slice complete, right? This is cold and then this is warm. So what you do, you float it on the cold water. You transfer from cold to warm is you create surface tension. It also spread out the tissue section. Wow! I don't know what you just said, but this is magic. Okay, you want to try is it? Yes. Okay. Must sit properly. How what is properly? Oh, chest, Turn one down, the other way. The other way. The other way yes. like Keep on rolling. The tissue come out. Eh? Oh, how come the tissue come out? No, no. Re-embed again. Ha! Ah. We have to treat that two, three mm piece of tissue with the utmost care. Can? Can. Use forceps to pull. Ah! Oh, oh, oh. That's good, that's good. Nice. Yeah, you can pick up that one. Then put in the water. No, no, no. <laughs> Make it central. Yay, yeah, nice. Okay, good. So what's the normal speed? Ah? One block you cut about, the most is one minute. What do you think? Is it easy? No. So what we're doing here now is we're going to use the microscope to examine the cells. These two were both cut by Wenqi, right? Yeah. So we got no comparison no, against your skills. <laughs> the view is only taking up a small portion of the whole... You don't have to plaster your eye on it. You just have to move back a little bit. Oh, I don't need to go all the way yeah, in. Yeah, you don't need to touch your eye on oh. it. Oh! Oh! Now, I'm going to show you the colon cancer that we saw earlier on. Cancer is uncontrolled proliferation of a cell. So that means it's a cell gone rogue, gone bad. And when you have a cell that's growing and growing and making multiple copies of itself in an uncontrolled manner, you are going to eat up into the space that's around it. Like this whole area that I'm showing you, this is all cancer cells. You mean all the like... All of these are cancer oh. cells. So this is a relatively advanced stage cancer already. La. Right. Understand. Wait, but what's the norm? That's a very good question because you always want to know what normal looks like. Oh, so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a normal gland looks like this. Very nice round structures, very evenly distributed, all sort of similar sizes. And when you look at the cells, the cells is mainly very interesting. <laughs> I don't know why I was never interested in science in secondary school, but I love it. It's very visual. Uh, how do I put it? It's like watching a colour TV. Just now when you say you get a sense of intimacy with the patient, right? I totally understand. Because yeah. when you look at it, you can really see what's going on. Exactly. I'm, I'm looking at the cell, no? <laughs> in the patient's body. I may not see the face, but I'm seeing this is a part of the patient. It gives me a lot of satisfaction la, to be able to, to look at this and be able to come to a diagnosis that benefits the patient. So amazing, the things you all do. Yeah. I didn't expect to feel so amazed when I saw the cells. 
I don't know there. I think I had an existential moment there. Like, yeah, really looking at the crux of what that patient is going through and what you're trying to help that patient solve. I, I don't know if you mind me asking, like, how, how do you feel like, because I know you're, you're a mom. Like, yeah. So, like, oh no, but I'll get emotional. Okay, so upon receiving diagnosis that like, um, you know, my loved one got cancer, right? I think you don't necessarily, you don't have that kind of realisation on what's the BTS to get there, right? or like the little things it takes to give you that answer. Seeing how the cancer cells are a part of you and it is just cells that go rogue, right? And you see how it penetrates or invades the other parts of your body. I think that is just those little changes must be causing some kind of pain to her or discomfort to her. Lah. Yeah. I think Singwan and Wei Chang are like a great team. They play such an important role. And these are all things that you don't see. When you think about a hospital, you will think about doctors, you will think about patients, you will think about nurses, but you won't think about the people behind the scenes. Lah. And it's important that we recognise this profession and we recognise this team of people. Lah. Cells are amazing, guys. Take your bio seriously. We do this one. Uh, this one. We must add the hip. 